Hello and welcome to Newsbreak. I'm your host, Nick Steffens. Coming up, Washington handed Burlington their first conference loss, but first, today's top stories. Iowa has issued an air quality advisory due to unhealthy levels of fine particulate matter in the eastern third of the state. Expected to persist through Wednesday, the National Weather Service attributed the haze to smoke from Canadian wildfires and advised people to wear masks when spending extended periods outdoors. Air quality indexes in Washington and Henry County reached 187 and 198, respectively, with no information available for Fairfield. The Environmental Protection Agency recommended that children, outdoor workers, older adults, and individuals with heart disease take precautions, such as avoiding strenuous outdoor activities, keeping outdoor time short, and considering indoor alternatives. An AQI to cigarettes calculator suggested that spending eight hours in such conditions would be equivalent to smoking two cigarettes. Visibility was reduced to one to two miles in some areas, and real-time air quality monitoring indicated elevated indexes in Muscatine and Kiyosakwa. The northwest corner of the state had indexes in the 40s by Wednesday morning, below the threshold for minimal risk. Sinclair Tractor marked its 25th anniversary with a fundraising event at Old Threshers, raising over $600,000 for food banks in Iowa. CEO Bob Sinclair expressed gratitude for the support with over 10,000 customers participating in the event's activities, including food, agricultural displays, and a play area for the kids. The company had aimed to raise $1 million but was already pleased with the $500,000 collected prior to the event. Sinclair emphasized the importance of food banks in, in assisting communities facing economic challenges, inflation, and high interest rates. Donations can still be made to the food bank, initiated by sending checks to the Iowa Food Bank Association. The funds raised will provide approximately two and a half meals per dollar spent and benefit 352 local food pantries in Iowa, Missouri, and Illinois. Food Bank of Iowa President Michelle Book highlighted the significant impact on Sinclair's fundraising and combating food insecurity, particularly for for counties with high poverty rates and limited resources. The American Cancer Society's Relay for Life event in Washington was shortened due to inclement weather, resulting in low turnout. Despite this, organizers deemed the fundraiser successful. Denise Conrad, Washington County Relay for Life Community Development Manager, highlighted that the funds raised contributed to cancer research, patient services, and early detection efforts in Washington County. Vendors paid fees and donated a portion of their proceeds while teams engaged in year-long fundraising efforts. Conrad encouraged community members to participate by becoming sponsors or joining teams, emphasizing the ease of forming a team with friends and family to support a worthy cause. The Southeast Iowa Symphony Orchestra will be hosting their Symphonic Blast concert featuring musical director Robert McConnell and fireworks by J&M Displays. The event will take place at Crapo Park's Band Shell Mount Pleasant on Saturday, July 8th at 8 p.m. Attendees are encouraged to bring lawn chairs, beverages, bug spray, and friends to enjoy the enchanting classical music and spectacular fireworks overlooking the Mississippi River. The concert aligns with the Burlington Community Day in the Parks, celebrating National Parks and Recreation Month. Southeast Iowa Symphony Orchestra will perform compositions by John Williams, Leroy Anderson, Henry Mancini, John Philip Sousa, Dave Bubeck, and Aaron Copland, including pieces from Mission Impossible, Pirates of the Caribbean, Stars and Stripes Forever, Simon and Garfunkel, Sherrod, and the 1812 Overture. Admission is free, and the event is sponsored by various organizations. For further details, interested individuals can contact the SEISO office via email or visit their website. We're going to take a quick break, and when we come back, we'll take a look at the weather and sports. Since 1905, Kelowna Cooperative Technology Company has helped our community stay connected with the latest advancements in clear, dependable telecommunications services. KCTC provides rural Iowans with access to high-speed fiber internet, as well as phone, television, computer repair, and cybersecurity solutions. We're also proud supporters of local organizations and area schools within the community. KCTC, keeping Kelowna connected. At the Capper Auto Group, we put our customers' needs first and understand that everyone is as different as the vehicle they select. We offer new Ford, Chevrolet, Buick, GMC, Jeep, Chrysler, Dodge, and Ram vehicles in a friendly environment that puts you in the driver's seat. When it comes to service, we maintain factory-trained technicians and competitive pricing. The Capper Auto Group still believes that service after the sale provides the best customer experience. Come see the Capper experience for yourself. When you aspire to be a dancer, you are both an artist and an athlete. 
Your strength combines with beauty and grace seamlessly. Your efforts result in enhanced coordination, the ability to cooperate and compromise with others, and the confidence to perform in front of an audience. Not to mention the fun you will have and the lifelong friendships you will develop. We are enrolling now for fall classes and we would love to see you shine like the star that you are. Join us for Dance and Tumbling at Stairway to the Stars. Please visit our website for online registration. Hospice isn't a place, it's a type of care that focuses on living. Servicing a seven county area, the Hospice of Washington County staff of nurses, social work, hospice aides, spiritual and grief support, volunteers, music and massage therapists are able to provide free end of life care where the patient lives. We write wills, give consent for organ donation, but rarely is there a plan for what we would want the final phase of our lives. At Hospice of Washington County, we encourage our patients to be in charge of their health care decisions while maintaining quality of life. I met Tammy about 20 years ago with, when her daughter was in Special Olympics and I was coaching. She told me that she was into doing senior benefits. We became even closer friends. She cares about everybody, especially the seniors, so call her. Hello and welcome back to Newsbreak. I'm your host, Nick Steffens. Coming up, your five-day forecast, but first, obituaries. A celebration of life for Enid Mortland of New London will be held at 10 a.m. July 1st at Elliott Chapel. Levi Allen Bechtold of Riverside passed away on June 23rd at the age of 17. A funeral service will be held at 4 p.m. June 30th at Marion Avenue Baptist Church. Jones and Enid Funeral Home is in charge of the arrangements. Patricia Jean Mangold of Wellman passed away on June 24th at the age of 93. A private family service will be held at Elm Grove Cemetery at a later date. Jones and Eden Funeral Home is in charge of the arrangements. Robert J. Jones of Washington passed away on February 5th at the age of 89. A celebration of life will be held at 11 a.m. July 1st at the Jones and Eden Funeral Home. William David Meyer Wellman passed away on May 11th at the age of 85. A private graveside service will be held on July 1st at Holy Trinity Catholic Cemetery. Jones and Eden Funeral Home is in charge of the arrangements. Sheila Garrett of Riverside passed away on on June 25th at the age of 76. A celebration of life will be held from 12 to 4 p.m. July 1st at the Hills Community Center. Snyder and Hollenbaugh Funeral Services is in charge of the arrangements. Now with obituaries, it is now time for your five-day forecast. We start off the morning with some rain and a high of 87. Tomorrow it will be partly cloudy with a high of 91. There's a chance of isolated thunderstorms on Friday with a high of 88. Those thunderstorms will carry over into Saturday and the high will be 82. Finally, it'll be on Sunday, it'll be 86 and mostly sunny skies. We're going to take another quick break and when we come back, we'll take a look at sports. Federation Bank is a locally owned bank providing award-winning customer service. We believe that we are more than just a federation of banks, but a federation of communities serving Brighton, Richland, Wellman, Washington, Iowa. Federation Bank's highly skilled staff is here to make sure you are able to accomplish your personal and professional goals, whatever they may be. Federation Bank, your family bank. Family owned and operated by Andy and Sarah Ross, Ross Auto has been your vehicle repair and maintenance headquarters since 1935. We specialize in all makes of cars and light duty trucks. With our variety of available services, let us help you keep rolling and your vehicle operating efficiently. Services include general auto repair, alignments, brakes, fuel injection, and more. Schedule your appointment today at 319-653-5656. That's 319-653-5656. You know, it's not a question of what all you have and so on with your life. It's who is in your life and how much you care for them and how much they care for you. And Tammy definitely cares. Welcome back to Newsbreak. I'm your host, Nick Steffens. It is now time for sports. Burlington and Washington, the top two teams in the Southeast Conference, had an intense clash on Monday night. 
In the first game, the Demons handed the Greyhounds their first conference loss of the season with a score of 8-7. However, in the second game, the Greyhounds emerged as the victors with a 9-6 win. Washington faced a 5-1 deficit in the first game but made a comeback, scoring multiple runs in the 6th and 7th innings to secure the lead. Emory Walton had a stand-up performance going 3-4 with 3 RBIs. Bella Salazar pitched a complete game, allowing 7 runs on 12 hits. In the second game, Burlington took an early lead and held on to secure the win. Layton Salazar and Colby Griner stood out for Washington with three hits each. Despite the split, Burlington clinched the Southeast Conference title. In the Southeast Conference series, the Washington baseball team faced off against Burlington on Monday night, but struggled to keep up with the conference-leading Greyhounds, losing both games 14-2 and 9-2. The first game became, began positively for Washington as they scored a run in the first inning, but Burlington responded with three-run home run, seizing the lead. Burlington continued to dominate, adding runs in subsequent innings, including three in the third, four in the fourth, and five more in the fifth and sixth. Washington managed to score one more run in the fifth. In the second game, the teams remained scoreless until Burlington took control with eight runs in the third inning. Washington scored two runs in the sixth and seventh, but it wasn't enough. With these losses, the Demons' season record stands at 4-19 overall and 4-8 in the SEC. That is the news for Southeast Iowa. I've been your host, Nick Steffens. This has been your news break, and I'll see you next time.